All right. As you guys know, I've been doing knife reviews for a long time here in the Net and Fancy project. And I got to tell you, this is dead honesty. It is very rare I get super stoked about a blade. At this point in my reviewing career, that's just the way it goes. I mean, I've seen so many blades, tested so many blades. I like them. Yes, they're going to rate high on the likability scale. But getting absolutely stoked to where I'm thinking about it, fondling the blade, <laughs> I know, I'm crazy, and really, really uh, just digging it, it's rare. This is one of those knives. It should be a very easy review for me to do because I love the knife so much. You've already seen the title, here it is. Knives of Alaska Featherlight Hunter in D2 Steel. Yeah, Hall of Famer right now. With, here's a caveat, my modifications. Out of the box, it is a great knife uh, with the mods that some of which you're seeing right now. It is a Hall of Famer, hands down. Hands down. I have two versions to show you. This is the OD G10 one, plain edge, D2 steel once again. Very handsome blade. This is the model number. The box, that is 395FG Featherlight, purchased from notjustknives.com by the project, right? For review, testing, all that good stuff. Here comes another coloration. I like this one actually a little bit better. The orange. Oh, man, that is a cool, cool knife. Now, I know my knife guys in TMP, and they know me. I mean, after five and a half years, we kind of know each other. And guys know that I get really <laughs> kind of weirdly excited about lightweight stuff. Not just knives. Flashlights, multi-tools, backpacks. I like, I like lightweight gear. This sucker right here, 2.2 ounces. How's that? That's pretty amazing. Now, in front of this camera, we have seen... I wouldn't say a lot, but a fair amount of lightweight blades. But blades like this, this size level, this size efficiency, that's a foot stomper, by the way, for this review on this knife. It's very rare. Very, very rare. I'm going to show you some competitive options, by the way, before we end the video. And I have heard you guys loud and clear. Because <laughs> I did a, a, a video review of another blade recently, and I put a time limit on myself. Uh, just for the heck of it. It's just something I wanted to do and I didn't show you competitive options and guys don't like that <laughs> My TMP knife guys do not like it. I mean by a huge margin. That's what guys are saying. No time limit We like the competitive options Message re message received and you guys are funny you crack me up All right, so knives of Alaska you know, I was late getting on board with them. I got to tell you, you guys know that. I did not review KOA until probably, heck, a year ago. And that was the amazing fixed blade elk hunter. What a great knife that is. And there's some other great blades that KOA does. And check this. They're all made right here in the good old USA. And this is what I've talked about in other reviews before. Their pricing is very reasonable. How do they do that? Well, look to KOA, man. Uh, there's a company that's getting it done, that they are employing a U.S. workforce. They use U.S. materials, and their knives are very affordable. You're looking at one right here, the Featherlight Hunter, ballpark 50 bucks. For this quality and this superior design in most, not all, but most respects, that's getting it done. I mean, that's how you take it to offshore production is you're very efficient, you have winning designs, you have superb quality control, as you will see in this knife. Bang, winning formula. You know, the US can win uh, knives of Alaska, I'm gonna point to as an example of how that's gonna get done. All other companies, please take note. I mean, whatever they're doing formula-wise in their business, it's working. Oh man, I love this knife. On to philosophies of use. And it gets interesting. This is actually designed as a very lightweight hunting knife, a folding knife. And I think that is a very realistic POU for this blade. 
Now, like I've said in a lot of reviews previously, a Foley knife is not your ideal skinny knife. One, it's going to have a lot of nooks and crannies that can hold gunk. You know, and you're going to have to clean it all out with your toothbrush when you get home. Doable. You know, that's not a showstopper. It's just, I don't know, it's just another task you're going to have to do as you maintain your gear, which I hope we all do. It's always a lot of work maintaining the gear. So that's that. It's a folding knife. It does have a little more nooks and crannies, but I think blade-wise and the length and size efficient blade that this thing has, it's going to rock in that philosophy of use. Uh, I've had some uh, other ones that I'm going to review sooner or later. Please be patient. Uh, KOA blades that have deployed, <laughs> for lack of a better word, into the uh, hunting environment and the D2 that they put on these blades is outstanding. It's excellent. I mean, it's heat treated properly. It holds a wicked edge. It's everything that KOA says it is. Knives of Alaska. That it's a great choice for that. So when we're talking about a hunting skinny knife for I would say even large game, it would work. I think they advertise it for more mid-sized game, maybe small game. It'd work for that though. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to jump ahead while we're in this you know, realm of POU to the blade shape. Uh, this is one reason I'm super excited about the knife. I think the blade shape is pretty much perfection. It is a drop point. I do like drop points for a lot of different uses, applications. But notice the belly, how the belly drops down here for skinning. That's ideal. And, and when we talk about other POUs, it works for that as well. And I did say several times, the foot stomper, size efficient. There are a few knives that I've seen in my knife career, uh, let's better, better say addiction, that really impressed me with the size efficiency for the weight. Uh, one I reviewed way back in 2008, it, it's foundational. That's a Benchmade 2550 Mini Reflex. Uh, you talk about a size efficient, weight efficient knife uh, really amazing. It's like 2.5 ounces, 154 cm steel. At the time I got this, about 115 bucks. The Mini Reflex, also a classic drop point. You see a theme developing. I'm going to show you some that aren't competitive options, but it is. And look at this. The uh, I can't speak. The similarities between these two blades right here. Wow. I mean. Almost identical size-wise, the Mini Reflex Benchmade. It is an auto. If you can get it, I say get it. Love it. It's a HOF knife all the way. But these knives are like neck and neck for size efficiency. You know, and I really like on the Featherlight Hunter how you do have a longer handle than the blade. So when I talk about size efficiency, I'm not necessarily saying, hey, you know, that blade has to be exactly the same length of the handle. Like... For instance, oops, you saw, saw a little peek of what's coming up. We'll get to that, trust me. <laughs> I forgot that's there. Oh. Um, uh, I think I reviewed the Microtech uh, Mini SOCOM Elite, and that is a very one-to-one -one ratio knife. So the blade and the handle are almost identical. This is going to be a little bit longer, and I think that's very appropriate because you have enough real estate for the skinning task. Same size as a 2550, and to me that is all aces. So great hunt knife. Uh, would it be a primary hunt knife? Uh, no, I'd use a fixed blade. Absolutely. But what if? What is a backup? Yeah, totally. You can integrate it into your survival kit too. It's only, again, 2.2 ounces. Wow. EDC -er. Uh I'll say HOF right off the bat. Again with these mods. You know, out of the box, not a Hall of Fame everyday carry knife because it lacks a clip. To me, that's a real showstopper for me and how I do it. I think Knives of Alaska sells a neoprene clip for it. Uh, not clip, but neoprene pouch. Do I recommend it? I, I don't know. I'm not a real you know, pouch guy when it comes to folding knives. I don't like it because it interferes with my EDC system, which is the Vibe 2 carry pack, right? No, but once you get that squared away and you get some other things done which you can see I'll get there uh, HOF I mean you're talking it'll rank up with all the other HOF blades I'm going to show you and they're all just amazing in their own right just a great EC blade again we get to that size efficient blade it's just the perfect size 
for all types of EDC tasks. I mean, you're talking about food preparation, cutting open packages, cutting whatever, rope. Oh, perfect. EDC, man, what a great knife. And it's so light. So this is a type of knife that I would integrate with a tactical blade. It's only 2.2 ounces, and so, you know, I'll throw a tactical blade. I don't have one here on the table to show you. Uh, that's what I always do, and you guys know that from my EDC system. I always have an EDC knife, a Victorinox Cadet, and uh, a tactical blade. I wouldn't say always, but pretty much always. If you guys show up with a gear check and you have this modded out like this, plus a tactical blade, oh, uh, dude, you're going to get huge points, huge points for the gear check. POU. How about a medical blade? First aid kit knife. Oh, man. It's almost like a scalpel. And yes, out of box, it is pretty darn sharp. And no, I still don't have any decent paper. I still have this Simmons scope manual instruction sheets. Let's check it out. This is a factory edge right here. Cutting through a few sheets. Scientific paper test. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it does okay. Uh, a little grabbing right there. Uh, it doesn't impress me. I, I'm not going to lie. You know, uh, it needs some work. You know, nowadays with Edge Pro Apex sharpener, I mean, I just don't put up with dull blades anymore. Well, I mean, why? So that's what I did with this one. I, I just totally, you know, got it done on the Edge Pro, and it's uh, polished to 2000 grit on this one. Now that thing, oh my gosh, that's that's a pretty sick edge. I haven't even paper tested it. It better be sick. Oh, oh. dude. Oh my gosh, this excites me, man. I'm excited. Yeah, it's manly. Uh, the serrated portion, nothing do you like that. Uh, on this, I actually do. Yeah, I like that. It, I mean, it's not like the Kershaw serrations, which I think are ideal maybe the VEF on the CRKTs, but it works. And I, in this model of knife, I would give it a pass. I usually don't. Partially serrated or fully serrated knives, I usually detest them. How's that for being real? Medical knife, sharpened like this? Absolutely, I mean, let's look at the tip right there. Uh, it's perfection, that tip, perfection. I mean, it couldn't be any better. You know, as far as the balance between strength and preciseness. Um, and it weighs nothing. Just throw it in your... I mean, it's kind of maybe on an expensive type uh, side to put in, you know, your fact, but it's up to you. And then finally, I'm going to say philosophy of use, light camp knife. Yeah, you go up in the woods uh, and backpacking slash backpacking knife. You will see me backpack this knife. It's only 2.2 ounces and it has, uh, you know, a relatively long blade for that, that weight perfect backpack light camp knife you can split tender with it you can do food preparations you can dress your fish that you catch maybe bigger game like we talked about already in an emergency situation whatever the feel in hand that's pou's hope you liked it see we're at 1337 right now and to have a relaxed and what i think is interesting pou discussion i love it it takes time you can't rush it uh here we go in hand, this thing, again, just weighs nothing. You know, it's, it's just, like it says, a feather light. Uh, the balance is outstanding. The feel is excellent. We'll get to some ergonomic concerns I have, uh, which are easily remedied, I think. The steel we talked about already, really excellent KOA D2. And there's lots of excellent D2 out there. Is it my absolute favorite steel? Nope. You know, I kind of, I really like the, the, part, the powder metal technology the cpm technology is what i'm trying to say that's good steel but the d2 as they put it together is excellent and like i said in other hunting knife reviews it's a great choice for the philosophy of use you know designated by by this knife right here love the blade shape love it love it love it i would prefer a plain edge like the od version in the background has in case you're wondering but the d2 semi stainless tool steel it works how about speed uh it's adequate it's not super fast, and that will get to the first of the nut and fancy modifications, and that's the dual flat desert earth zip ties. What? Hey, nothing. Is that for waving from the pocket? Uh, on this knife, not really. It's more so you can like get more traction on that opening slot, which I think is not perfect because 
you can see it sits in the handle kind of low. You can deploy it with that, but I don't find myself being able to do it quickly. The zip ties, not a great deployment, better. I can, but still it's not like a wicked fast knife like perhaps some of the other competitive options I want to show you. There you go, and this one's stiff still. That one's been used a bit. This one new out of box other than my mods. So it hasn't been really worked in yet. So if you get a good wrist action like that, I gotta do it off camera so I don't smash my lighting. Great, it works good. So I'll say I'll say good on the deployment. How's the lockup? This one actually has a slight amount of wiggle in it. I did not adjust it. Is that a showstopper? Uh, no, not on this knife. Not with everything else you're getting. No way. Let's check out the OD version. Solid as a rock. Deployment on this one. Faster because it has use on it. Yeah, it has a pivot screw that you can adjust right there, right? No problems. I highly recommend you mod it with the dual zip ties too. Just like that. And this one I was able to lock it on, you know, adequately. On this one, for whatever reason, I mean, Dula and I were down in the shop doing it. I'm going to break out a separate video on that, by the way. I'll mention that again before we end. Uh, he wasn't able to crank it on, so I just put a little drop of super glue on it. Crank these things all the way back to the opening slot. Now they're locked on there, and that way they're not wandering. You know, so as I'm ready to pop the knife open. Ah, put, do it, don't do it. It's up to you. I would say the strength is more than adequate for the philosophy of use. Every philosophy of use we've talked about, I've always said... Here in the TMP Knife Show, if you want a strong knife, go with a fixed blade. I mean, for crying out loud, guys act like their folding knives should be like all that. Uh, when we're talking about a 2.2 ounce featherweight knife, no. Yeah, it's a liner lock. It works just fine. There's your lockup on this one. You know, it's about 50% or so. This one is a little bit later because it's had some more use on it. I hope it doesn't go more than that, but if it does, I'll just send it back to KOA, bro. Have them fix it. I think it's like a freaking lifetime warranty, and that will take us to handle. Man, I love this knife. OD is outstanding. The coloration they did is perfection. Notice the rounded edges on this. A lot of knife reviews, I criticize the manufacturers because they have these really sharp edges, and I don't know why, they just do. Uh, KOA gets it. These are chamfered perfectly. As you can see, very comfortable in hand. This is a pillar constructed knife. That makes it light. All the blood and guts will flow through. You'll still have to toothbrush it when you get back to the trailer. But yeah, I love the design. You have the mini torques put together. You can take the knife apart if you want to. You don't have to. Let's check the centering. Oh, you're still peeking at that thing, aren't you? Uh, yeah, ideal. How's that? On the orange model, centering. Pretty darn good. Pretty good. Ergonomics. Uh, minor criticisms coming at you. I always am honest in my reviews, whether I like something, whether I love it, or whether I hate it. It needs jumping. But nothing fancy. It's got some jumping up there. And by the way, do you know, guys know why KOA did it up there? Does it seem weird to you? They would jump it. By the way, this run of jimping, very short as it is, is very functional. Why is it clean up there? It's out so you can control the blade in the skin. That's what I think. So you can do index finger, bring the thumb up. You have the control as you're caping. That's why. But it was lacking back here, and so I did it. I just broke out the grinding wheel. Uh, the mini grinding disc off the Dremel works great. Is it, like, perfectly spaced on both of them? No. I don't really care. I mean, these are user knives. There's the OD jumping job I did. And now, dude, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Ergonomics handle is great. There's a kind of a chamfer there to get to the liner lock. Uh, and I talked about the zip ties already. Here we go. <laughs> the heart of the matter. You guys already know this. Uh, clip. It doesn't have one out of box, and that does still kind of suck. However, I totally fixed it by doing this. What? Dude. That's knife, guys. I mean, people watching this video, I was getting excited over a clip. They go, God, you guys are so weird. That what? You're excited over a clip? What? Have you ever had anybody do that? I mean, even Doodle, I was down the shop. I'm like beside myself, like giddy. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking wicked. This knife, how it turned out. He's like, yeah, it's cool, but he just didn't get it. Number one, it's a loop over clip. Okay, so it's going to be a deep ride carry. 
And number two, it was a real tough job installing it. I'm not going to lie. That's because you have hardened stainless steel liner on that side. You have to because that's where the liner lock is. And it was really tough to drill into that thing. I had to be extremely patient with a very tiny drill bit as it worked its way through that hardened, hardened stainless steel. I was patient, looped it up a lot, and finally it broke through and I was so stoked. But then came the tapping. Those are two 8-56 screws that I put in that clip. They had to be tapped into the stainless steel liner. I was able to locate this at Amazon.com. No, 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 no. Very tiny tap uh, set, and there's that drill bit. It comes with it. Cool. And it worked. I was real patient. I was really scared the tap was going to break. It didn't. Because I was patient, backed it out, cleaned the threads, kept it lubed up, and bam! Perfection. EDC perfection. Medical kit perfection. Backpacking knife perfection. For me. I think it's just outstanding, that clip. Here's the one on the OD model. I mounted it just a little bit different. And by the way, this clip is just insane. I love it. You can go to my web store. I'm going to buy a batch of these. If you want to buy this knife, mod it. Or if you want to just attach this clip, which is a favorite of mine. I'll have a large and a small. I think the large is not blackened. The small one is. Uh, the web address is at the top there. So you can go check that out. And I'll... I'll basically give them to you as, as what I'm paying for. Maybe a little bit extra to pay for our handling and stuff. Yeah, so the clip is just excellent. Holds tight. Carries deep. Durability. Fine review. Uh, I would say as long as, as I say this all the time, as long as you don't abuse it, especially the D2, it will rust on you. I, I keep it oiled. If you're going to use it for food preparation, uh, do it with vegetable oil or something like that. It'll work great. Uh, the liner lock, you're not going to be chopping or batoning with it. I just don't see any problems. And KOA is a very reputable company, again, with a lifetime warranty. If you have any issues, uh, send it off to them. I'd love to think, see what they said, though. You send it back modded like this. They're like, what? Hey, man, clip. Hopefully, they wouldn't have an issue with it. They should just fix it. A uh, value is excellent. It is a U.S. produced, as you see here, Hall of Famer for around $50. Recommended retailer on the top there. Competitive options. On review. See, here we are, 22 minutes, dude. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm finding it interesting. Mini Reflex 2550. Yeah, still a competitive option. Uh, about twice the price, though, and it's an automatic. So if you're in a, you know, a place that autos are no, no. I'm s first, I'm so sorry. And second, uh, yeah, not an option for you, I guess. How about the Delica Four? Oh. Dude, 2.2 ounces VG10 steel, around 50 bucks too. This one's in brown, obviously. This is a true HOF knife. How thin and fast, great jimping, all the stuff I've raved about in pretty much the whole time in TMP, right? I mean, I can't even tell you how many Delicas I've sold here in TMP. Thousands, thousands, especially the FFG model. I mean, that's my favorite, favorite. Around the same price. But notice the difference in blade shapes. You know, it's a thinner blade on the feather light. Leaf-shaped blade on the Endura. I love them both. You know, it's trying to trying to pick between two awesome motorcycles. I don't know what to tell you. I like them both. Love them both. Skyline 1760. 14C28N steel nowadays. It's 2.4 ounces. This one's dirt coated by me. And I think a Magpul Flat Desert Earth. 30 bucks around there, more or less. Great knife. Great knife. Uh, I... Homemade gimped this one too. Yep, I'm doing tip down because, like I said in my uh, updated review way back in 2009, uh, the Skyline carries better tip down, I think, just by the you know the design of the handle. So great competitive option. This one, I think I sharpened. Yeah, I did. I edge pro that sucker. Ah, oh, don't forget about this one. Please don't forget about this one because it deserves your love, attention, and affection. Saw twitch. Twitch 2 to be exact. Cryo treated OS 8 steel, 2.6 ounces, around the same price, 46 bucks. Total, total Hall of Famer, dudes. Total, great clip, assisted opening, flat ground, has the same blade shape as my very uh, vaunted you know, Flash one that I started all of TMP with. What a great knife. And especially in black, isn't that good looking? Dang, son. A lot of great knives on the table. 
like a knife show. I'm going to end with this. This is kind of out of left field, but man, do I love this knife. The Piranha Model 1. Another auto in fabulous flame orange. Oh my gosh. Wicked logo, logo. Another beautiful reflex style drop point. Love those drop points. So functional. Very sharp out of box. 154 CM steel. Black coated blade. Decent clip. Made in the good old USA for about 115 bucks. Huge cool factor. Huge utility factor. Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. But I guess this video is about the freaking uh, Featherlight Hunter. I got to tell you, man, as modded, it has all types of second kind of cool for me, like some of these other knives do. Mod yours the same way. I say get it. Highly recommended. Do not hesitate. Mod it. And you will love it. Carry EDC in your kit, whatever kit that is. Totally worth the money. It's a U.S. knife. Size efficient, adequately fast, wicked, wicked steel in it, as you can see. I mean, it gets the job done. Oh, man. Huge, huge likability scale. See ya.